Hello guys, how are you doing? I'm Dr. Amin Arora from Arora Medical Education and this video is all about facial nerve palsy. What are the key things you need to know for a medical exam question if it comes up or in a medical exam role play? Facial nerve palsy comes up in multiple different medical exams again and again and again. So we're going to talk about facial nerve palsy, but also we're going to talk about a 10% discount on any of our audiobook courses just for you having watched this video. That could be PLAB 1, PLAB 2, MSRA, AKT, CSA, Physician Associate, Medical School, uh, communication skills, we've got so many. So I'll talk about at the end how to get 10% off any audiobook course just to have and watch this facial nerve palsy video. Right, let's start with facial nerve palsy. So we've done two things. Number one, we talked about some of the common things to think about in terms of presentation for facial nerve palsy. And also we're going to talk a little bit about upper versus lower motor neuron facial palsy, how to differentiate and how they might differ. So let's start with the common presentation sense. So remember four key things. Ears, mouth, tongue, eyes. Ears, mouth, tongue, eyes. Ears, mouth, tongue, and eyes. So let's start with ears first. So you get intolerance to high pitch sounds. Intolerance to high pitch sounds when it comes to facial nerve palsy. Facial droop, that's a classic thing that people often remember when it comes to facial nerve palsy, so drooping of the affected side. Weakness of the facial muscles, and that's what leads to a lot of these things happening. If you look at the tongue, or think about the tongue, then you get loss of taste or reduction in taste in the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. So reduction in, reduction in taste on the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, and then the inability to close the eye on the affected side. Inability to close the eye on the affected side. So remember four things, ears, mouth, tongue, and eyes. Now, the difference between upper and lower motor neuron facial palsy. Let's start with causes first. So upper motor neuron facial nerve palsy, think about things like stroke, think about things like tumors, Think about that, things like multiple sclerosis. There are lots of other causes as well, but worth bearing a few key ones in mind in terms of a medical exam. If you think about lower motor neuron palsy, think about Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, so that's your herpes zoster infection, Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, and think about Bell's palsy, so your idiopathic cause of a lower motor neuron facial nerve palsy. How do you differentiate it clinically? So the key thing is that in the, most people remember it by upper motor neuron nerve palsy give you upper sparing. Upper motor neuron um, facial nerve palsy gives you upper sparing, so it spares the upper part. So what it's saying is that if you get a, a facial nerve palsy affecting the left side, for example, if it's an upper motor neuron palsy, then the upper part is spared. So the forehead muscles are not affected. So therefore, this person will be able to wrinkle their forehead. You'll be able to see the wrinkles in the forehead. However, in a lower motor neuron, facial nerve palsy, you don't get that upper sparing. The whole of that side of that face is affected. So say again, someone's got a, a left-sided facial nerve palsy and it's a lower motor neuron palsy, then the whole of that left side will be affected, including the upper part. So this person would not be able to wrinkle their forehead if it's a lower motor. If it's an upper motor neuron, they would be able to because it's upper sparing, whereas if it's a lower motor neuron facial nerve palsy, they would not be able to wrinkle their forehead because the muscles of the forehead are going to be affected as well. So a couple of key things to remember when it comes to facial nerve palsy or seventh nerve palsy. The basic things to think about first, so ears, mouth, tongue, and eyes, and then the differentiation between upper motor neuron facial nerve palsy and lower motor neuron facial nerve palsy. Really hope this helps. Now, the audiobook discount, 10% off any of our audiobooks. Like we said, we have medical school finals, we have PLAB 1, we have PLAB 2, we have MSRA, we have GB stage 3, we have AKT, we have CSA, we have pharmacy prescribers, we have physician associates, we have uh, advanced nurse practitioners, we have general communication skills, so many different audiobook courses. You can have 10% off any of those just for having watched this video. This could be if you're watching it live, it could be if you're watching it in one year, two years, five years, it doesn't matter. Just send me an email, aman at auroramedicaleducation.co.uk, A-M-A-N at auroramedicaleducation.co.uk and say, I watched the facial nerve palsy video and I want 10% of an audiobook. I will then send you a code that you can use to get that 10% off. I really hope this helps. Much more like this on our social media streams. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching this on Instagram, please do follow. If you're watching this on Facebook, please do like the page, Dr. Amin Aurora, or Twitter as well. And hopefully we can teach you much, much more, whether it's our courses, day courses, online courses, audio courses, or our mock exams. But hopefully at some point we'll get to meet in the future. You know the hashtag? Campus will pass. Hashtag I went with Aurora. Remember facial nerve palsy.